Hi, this is JP from Not Alliance Over Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus, and this time we are looking at the secondary leader or, or operative leader of the X-Men Storm. Uh, and Storm comes with a pre-built leadership deck, so let's get started. Okay, and let's just jump right into the Hero Pack. So. Uh, we start with the Alter Ego side of Storm, so we have Aurora, uh, Mon or Aurora Munro, I can't pronounce that correctly, even if I would want to. So, uh, Aurora Munro has three recovery, mutant traded Aurora Munro begins the game with a weather deck, C insert, uh, I feel a storm coming uh, setup, choose a support from the weather deck and put it into play and uh, we have a weather deck which we will look at next i even haven't <laughs> looked at this so i uh, will look at the he hero side first then go oh yeah and hand side six hit ten hit points so then we have the hero side which is storm one four two attack one defense hero uh, X-Men traded, weather control action, swap your weather support in play with a support of your choice from the weather deck. Resolve the special ability on your weather support in play, give it once per round. And 5 hand size and hit points is 10. Well, um, might as well start looking at the um, weather supports next. So first off, we have Fierce Skies. So uh, it is a weather traded support, permanent. Its character gains stalwart special, draw one card. And this, well, we can't commit this, but uh, there are uh, resource marks on this. If you have a card that says that you can generate a resource that matches or whatever. But yeah, uh, next up we have Hurricane. So Hurricane is a weather support, permanent, each character gains retaliate one special, remove two threats from a scheme. And this is, uh, this has a physical resource. Then we have a Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm is a weather support with permanent, each character gets plus one attack, uh, special deal two damage to an enemy. And this has an uh, energy resource. Lastly, we have Blizzard. So, Blizzard uh, is a weather support with permanent. Its character gets minus one attack. Special, choose a non elite minion until the end of the round. Treat that minion's text box as if it were blank, except for traits. And this has a mental resource on it. Okay, well, um, I think. Uh, playing with Storm, you have to be mindful of what weather to have for each situation. Next up, let's look at the rest of the signature cards for Storm. First up, we have uh, a Storm's Crown. It is a two-cost upgrade, item traded. Storm gets plus one ward. Hero resource, it's a Storm's Crown. Uh, generate the printed resource of your weather support. So, there it is. So. That is really, uh, you really need to know if you need a specific resource type, which weather condition to have in play when you are using this. So that, there it is. And this can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, and uh, next we have Storm's Cape. It is a free cost upgrade item traded. Storm gets plus one defense and gains the aerial trait. Hero responds after you resolve the special ability of on your weather support, exhaust or escape, ready storm. And this can be committed as an energy resource. So, a powerful upgrade which you want to have early on. Next up, we have uh, Aurora's Garden. It is a one to support location, alter ego action. Exhaust Aurora's uh, Garden, heal two damage from your identity. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So, a healing card which is pretty useful sometimes if you don't want to exhaust in alter ego to recover so you can heal a bit with this 
Next up, we have uh, Weather of Goddess. There are actually three copies of this event in the deck. So it's a zero cost event, uh, super power, hero action, swap your weather support in play with a support of your choice from the weather deck, resolve the special ability on your weather support in play, and this can be committed as a energy resource. So this lets you switch the uh, weather condition uh, more than once per round. Uh, so that that's good. And then, then uh, uh, we have Torrential Rain. There are three copies of this. Torrential Rain is a two-cost event. Superpower Thwart, Traded, Hero Action Thwart, Remove three threats from among teams in play. If Hurricane is in play, resolve its special ability. Okay, so some of these events key off of the weather condition. So again, you need to be mindful of which one you have in play. And this can be committed as a mental resource. Next, we have a lightning bolt. Uh, there are only two copies of this. So lightning bolt is a free cost event, attack super power, hero action, attack, deal eight damage to an enemy if thunderstorm is in play, resolve its special ability, and this can be committed as an energy resource. Okay. Next up we have flash. Freeze. There are two copies of this. So Flash Freeze is a one cost event. Uh, defense superpower traded. Hero interrupt. Defense when the villain attacks you, the villain, and each minion engaged with you gets minus three attack while attacking you this phase. If Blizzard is in play, resolve its special ability. So powerful defensive card for Storm. Next we have or this is actually the last card, uh, we have Blast of Wind, there are two copies of this, this in the deck. So Blast of Wind is a 3 cost event, superpower traded, hero action, choose a player, deal 3 damage to the villain and each minion engaged with that player. Resolve the special ability of your weather support. So, and this can be committed as a physical resource. So this doesn't mind which weather uh, support you have in play and it just triggers the special ability on it. So, quite event heavy and you need to know which uh, weather condition have in play in, at different uh, points of the game. Uh, then we have the leadership and basic cards that come in the pre-built deck. So let's start with the leadership cards. First we have Havoc. So Havoc is a four cost ally with one force and two attack with an asterisk. X-Men traded with three hit points. Uh, forced interrupt when Havoc attacks, discard the top card of the encounter deck for each boost icon. Discarded this way, Havoc gets plus one attack for this attack and takes uh, plus one consequential damage. Ouch. <clears throat> oh yeah, and there are no consequential damages on Havoc's attack. So if you don't get any boost icons, it deals two and doesn't take any consequential damage, but a bit risky, so maybe one you want to get some health buffs on Havoc before you are using him. Uh, next up, we have Mirage. So Mirage is a free cost ally with two sword, one attack, psionic and action traded with two hit points. Uh, response after Mirage enters play, choose an enemy whose skill is less than Mirage's sword. Stun that enemy. Okay and Mirage can be committed as a mental resource. So, uh, which enemy whose scheme is less than Mirage's sword? Well, Dwarf is two, so that means most of them you can stun. That's quite powerful, but of course three cost and only two hit points, so that, that is a... Well, it, it is a stun effect with uh, conditions. Uh, next up, we have Gentle. So this is a newer uh, uh, X-Men for me. I, I haven't seen this guy before and he is featured in the new strength card. So Gentle is a 3 cost ally with 1 force and 3 attack. And with an asterisk, X-Men trade at 3 hit points. Gentle takes plus 1 consequential damage after he attacks the villain. So you can attack the uh, minions with Gentle only taking one, but if you attack the villain, you take 
to so you need to know what who to hit with gentle to use get get the most use out of him and uh, he can be committed as a physical resource next up we have pixie so quite a lot of new allies in the deck actually now that i think um Yeah, uh, Rogue, uh, I mean, uh, Storm doesn't have a signature ally, which is interesting. Okay. Well, didn't notice that, but yeah, let's go back to Pixie. So Pixie is a two cost ally with one port, two attack with two uh, consequence of damage, aerial x traded with two hit points. So after you play Pixie from your hand, add an x ally from your discard pile into your hand. And this can be committed as a energy resource so that is actually quite a cool ability you can just uh, use one of your allies and play pixie get that ally back and play that ally again so i i like this effect next up we have uncanny x-men uh, there are three copies of this so uncanny x-men is a three cost four team traded play under any players control max one team for the player. Each of your X-Men allies gets plus one hit point. If each of your characters has the X-Men trait, each of your X-Men allies plus one of your resource to play. So this is a really good, really good card for uh, if you're playing multiplayer, you probably want to make a X-Men multiplayer team and have three of these to lower each player's X-Men allies costs a bit. And this can be committed as a mentor resource. Next up, we have uh, leadership skill. Three copies of this. So leadership skill is uh, upgrade. One cost upgrade. Uh, skill traded uses three leaders counters. Max one per player. Interrupt when an ally makes a basic fort or basic attack uh, action. Remove one leadership counter from here. That ally gets plus one board and plus one attack for that action. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Really good for those ally-based decks, which Storm definitely seems to be. Next up, we have To Me, My X-Men. And of course, there are three copies of this. To Me, My X-Men is a one-cost event. Tactic traded play only if your identity has the X-Men trait. Here action, search the top 5 cards of your deck for an X-Man ally and put it into play. If that ally is still in play at the end of the phase, add it to your hand. Oh boy, that is a really good card. I'm really <laughs> going to add this to all of my uh, X-Man leadership decks from now on. Really, really powerful. Okay, and it can be committed as an energy resource. Next up, we have Effective Leadership, two copies of this. So, uh, Effective Leadership, uh, I, I think we got this in the Cyclops deck, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Max Trooper deck resource interrupts when you spend this card, play an ally that, play an ally that ally gets plus one board and plus one attack at the end, uh, until the end of the phase. So, not talking about that that much. Then uh, we have the basic cards. First off, we have Forge. Forge is a two cost ally with one port and one attack. X Men traded, two hit points. Reso response after Forge enters play. Search your deck and discard pile for an X Men or X Force support and add it to your hand. Shuffle. Well, uh, of course, we got already a couple of. Uh, X-Men supports. First off, we have the X-Jet. I think this is also featured already in some pack, but I'll just read it. It's a 3 cost support vehicle X-Men traded. Uh, resource exhaust X-Jet generate a wild resource for a player whose identity has the X-Men trait and this can be committed as an energy resource. Then we have Utopia. This we already have had. Uh, Utopia has uh, two cost. Is it, it, Utopia is a two cost support. Location X-Men traded. 
each of your allies as the action trait increase your ally limit by one. Uh, response after an X-Men ally enters play, exhaust you copy already an X-Men character and this can be committed as a physical resource. Then uh, we have also have the X mentioned already. So X mention is a use of support location X -Men created. Also ego action, exhaust X mention, heal one damage from a mutant or an X Men character, any player whose alter ego has the mutant trait may trigger this ability and this can be committed as a mental resource. So I think this was in the Shadow Cat pre-built deck in the Mutant Genesis box. Then we have Endurance, so this is basically a reprint but with new art, three copies of this, so uh, you get plus three hit points play under any player's control, maximum per player, so I'm going to put this into my uh, Wolverine deck for sure later on. Then we have the new uh, art, basic energies or, or resource card, so energy. Genius and Strength. That is the pre-built uh, Storm deck. Next up, let's look at the Obligation and Nemesis sets. First up, we have Claustrophobia, which is the Obligation for Storm. Give to the Aurora Monroe player. Flip to Alter Ego form. Uh, you cannot change forms. Alter Ego action. Exhaust Aurora Monroe. Remove Claustrophobia from the game. So you don't even have a choice. You have to go to Alter Ego and exhaust once there. So tough luck if you if some effect exhausts you during the next turn and you can't exhaust or something. So that is annoying. And two boost uh, icons on that. Next up we have the ne uh, Storm Nemesis set. We have Halisto. Halisto is a minion with one scheme and three attack. Elite Morlock. Uh, five hit points, quick strike, uh, forced interrupt when a knife fight treasure is revealed, keep Kalisto, a tough status card, and this has three boost icons. Okay. Then we have Leader of the Morlocks, a side scheme. Uh, when defeated, player who defeated this scheme says the same counter deck and discard uh, and set aside area for knife fight and reveals it. Three boost icons, and this comes into play with two. Uh, threat per player. Uh, then we have Switchblade. So Switchblade is an attachment attached to the minion with the highest uh, printed uh, attack. Otherwise, this card gain surge. Attach minion attacks against piercing, and this gives plus two attack to that minion. And this has two boost icons. Okay. Then uh, we have the knife fight, which we already mentioned a couple of times. So there are two copies of the knife, knife fight treachery. So when revealed, alter ego, this card gains search. <laughs> when revealed hero, choose an enemy with the highest attack. That uh, attack uh, take damage equal to its attack. Deal damage to that enemy equal to your attack. Okay. And this has two boost icons. So that is the nemesis set. Not as bad as some of the others we have seen, but it's still uh, a nemesis set. Uh, lastly, uh, we only got uh, protection cards for the other uh, colors or other aspects. So we have Hangar Bay, three copies of this. Hangar Bay is a one cost support, location, maximum per player. Response after an ally defense against an attack and is not defeated, exhaust this card, ready that ally. Okay, well, if you're building a tough ally deck, then <laughs> that would be really good, and this can be committed as a mentor resource. So, okay, well, interesting card. Lastly, uh, we also got an extra encounter set, which is the Shadow King. So, let's look at that lastly. So the Shadow King is a, three, a minion with three scheme and three attack. Elite psionic traded, six hit points. While a controlled minion is in play, the Shadow King cannot take damage. When revealed, search encounter deck and discard file for a copy of the possessed attachment and reveal it. Shuffle. And three boost icons. Okay, well, we will look at the possessed uh, 
attachment quite soon. So that is the Shadow King. And then we have a Sight Scheme, a Ruler of the Astral Plane. So when defeated, discard one copy of Possessed from play. And this can be, uh, and this has an uh, acceleration icon. Then there's a boost icon on this card. So boost abilities. Uh, if you are engaged with a controlled minion, reveal this card. Okay. And six threats on it when it comes into play. Next, we have the possessed card, which we already mentioned a couple of times. So possessed is an attachment condition three. Attach ally as a controlled minion with a blank text box. Attach minion scheme is equal to its printed sword and it does not take consequential damage. When revealed, attach to the ally with the lowest sword without possessed attach. If you cannot discard gain search, and this has two boost icons. So, uh, a really nasty one against uh, high ally decks, or well, we'll see. I'm, I'm thinking of using this when I first play Storm, so we'll see. Lastly, uh, we have Astral Attack, which is a treachery. So, uh, when revealed, each controlled minion activates against you. If there are no controlled minions in play, this card gets search. And there's a boost ability. So boost, shuffle each Shadow King card from the discard pile into the encounter deck. Okay, so that is everything that comes in the Storm Hero Pack. So, interesting deck for sure, and uh, well, I, I haven't decided which scenario from the Mutant Genesis box I will be trying out with this. Maybe the Mansion Attack, because in the comics, uh, Storm is usually the one who is defending the Mansion when the, the X-Men team is out. But we'll see which I ever I decide, but I'm thinking of adding the Shadow King encounter set to that. Uh, game I will be playing with this but yeah that is everything hope you guys like this hero of focus thanks for watching and until next time